good morning from Alcaniz. So this is the very splendid castle of Alcaniz, which is now a parador, which is a, um, a state-run hotel. But we're starting here because um, it's also where I was going to ride past on the Via Verde today. But I decided not to do that because I didn't have gravel tyres. So I'm going to put that off, but instead I'm going to do the same route but on road. So this rather spectacular castle was held by the Knights of Calatrava. There goes my lift. I'm all alone, 85 kilometers from home. I'm feeling this first bit's going to be a bit hairy. I'm probably going to put you away once we're through the gate. I was wondering why Street View didn't have this part on their, on their maps. Because they're pedestrians. I guess I should get off. A lot of churches in this town. And sadly, I'm already lost. Can't go down there. That was quite a warren. But I'm out now, this road is at least straight. So it must go somewhere, otherwise it'd have bends in it. So, uh, getting lost in, uh, Alcaniz has cost me a bit because I'm already on the main road. The first 27 kilometers of today was going to be uh, little back roads, sweet little back roads. And instead I'm on a dual carriageway. Rather than charming, twisty back, back roads, with charming views, we have the slightly less charming Las Orcas Industrial Park. And that's Orcas with an H, as opposed to Orca with a O. Because you're not going to see a lot of killer whales gambling amongst the waves up here. My first chance to get off the main road. I don't know whether to go to Torrecilla or Valdegorfa. Valde Algorfa. Both pretty difficult to say. Left or right? Left. Well, getting lost in Alcaniz and then my rapid exit from it has meant that I didn't have a chance to tell you of the order of the Calatrava. Now the order of the Calatrava were an order of knights, like the Knights Templars, but these knights uh, came from a different background. They weren't knights at all. They were serfs, and they were serfs who served Cistercian monks and they did things like uh, raising the animals, tending the uh, fields, construction work, that sort of thing. But wow, bumpy! And um, the trouble with towns like Alcaniz was that they were very easy to take back from the Moors but they were very easily lost to them again because at the time there were no such thing as standing armies or garrisons. So um, Alcaniz was actually fought for three times and lost twice and it was only because of the order of Calatrava that they held on to it the very last time. So rather than let Alcaniz and the other towns and cities that they'd reconquered, stolen from the Moors, go back to the Moors, the Cistercians were one guy. He was a proper knight if you like, he was a, a noble lord who'd become a monk, he decided he was going to train up the, uh, the lay monks. And he did. And he did it to great effect. And they were particularly effective at fighting the Moors because they thought it was a, a religious crusade. And because of their great success, they were 
recognised as an order in their own right after seven years. Recognised by the Pope, that is. And after about 40 years, their rules were so well established that they, uh, they were treated as true knights and true clergy. They uh, had some extremely strict rules. They, um, they had to sleep in their armour. They had to fast for at least four days in the week. And their devotions were like any other monks. Apparently this route is uh, specially signposted for motorbikes. Oh, it's rough. Hold on. Oh, it's horrible. Used to how good the minor roads are in Catalonia. I didn't mention that we're in Aragon again today. Pretty beautiful though. And it's not the main road. I was in the middle of nowhere. It's that town, the one that we decided to go towards. Al. 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 Let's call it Al. You can call me Betty. I'll call you Al. And that is an incredible church. It's such a tiny little place. It's huge, it's ornate. I think I want to be enough. Oh, they've got another one. Oh, it's over my shoulder. I'm actually on, back on the road that I intended to take in the first place. I don't know when that happened, but it's good news. Val de Algorfa. His first hairpin. Not much of one. Well, it's a nice hairpin, it's not very steep. It's a brand new. Why would you come in here? Another church. We've got three churches here really feel like I'm saying goodbye to civilization with uh, saying goodbye to Bal de Algorfa just getting to the top of climb number three it was three and a half kilometers at six percent and I found that really hard <laughs> I haven't warmed up yet I don't think it was eight degrees when we started and it's up to about 10 now. So I've got nothing to complain about. I'm in long sleeves. Look. It's uh, whatever it is of November. It's the first time I've had to wear long sleeves. Still in shorts, sun's still shining. It's a fabulous day actually. And now we've got a nice descent. Heading back towards Catalonia now. Now that's quite a strange thing, having a lay-by, but what it is, where we are, Hold we're on, let me get landing this on the Greenwich Meridian. You see that metal line across the road? That's the Greenwich Meridian. Nook degrees, directly above. The Griffin Vulture. Bloody hell, that is close. My intention today was to be riding the Via Verde, the greenway that is uh, Spain's longest, the Val de Safran. Just about to pass over the top of it, I think. I think it's, yes, I think it's here. It is absolutely spectacular. There's loads of tunnels like that one. That one's quite a short one. So I think the longest one is two kilometers, but I don't want to tell you too much because that's for another trip. In this rather strange place is the Church of Master Labrador, which is a village which has been abandoned and is in ruins. For whatever reason, they've completely restored the church in the main street of the town but all the houses
recognise that bridge from medieval meanderings. We're just crossing the Matarania River. The old road looks a lot nicer. Possibly not going to Kawasaki. Oh, what a shame. There's no entry that way. Oh, I really fancy that hill. Absolutely lovely, isn't it? Portals everywhere. kilometers at four and a half to go on climb five so this is the N420 and this is one of Spain's arterial roads the sun's back there let's try it let's try the other side for a change hello I don't usually like putting my arm out in the traffic, but there isn't any. Here's one. There's no cars on it. I don't know why. It, uh, it goes past our town. I think 830 kilometers later, it ends in Seville in Andalusia. And it's yet another one of my long-standing aims is to ride it either back from Seville or ride to Seville. But it'll take some careful planning because around Madrid it turns into a motorway for a while. I should have saved the Cistercian warrior monk story for this climb. hard for you to see just how many wind turbines there are out there. It's many hundreds. <laughs> Snuck off the main road for a little bit. When we first came out of this was the main road. Now it's uh, all viaducts and cuttings and they've left this little road in for people like me. So this is the remnants of an Iberian village, circa 600 BC. It's not in a shabby location. That's the town of Gandesa, the Serra de Carales behind it, and this is the Serra de Pandols.
last climb of the day and I'm not sad it's been a really tough one I don't really know why I think it's the length of the hills has been just crazy this one is tiny and nearly done but some of them were you know five kilometers the first 14 kilometers were climbing it's just a bit much but hopefully I'll be back in time for a sundowner on the balcony so hopefully I'll see you there in a minute just made it it's been a lovely day it's got ever so calm now but I'm done my sundowner is a healthy coffee decaf of course and that's it thanks for watching